oh, well, it's all good. Man, do you see this new box? Have you ever gotten the, don't you love when Amazon Prime comes by and drops off a box for you guys? I mean, I love it whenever, how many love Christmas? How many love birthdays? You know, one time I called my dad in college. I was like, Dad, I need some, I need some money. And he sent me a box kind of like this. I can rip this open? Yeah. Can't do not open. I had a box come in the mail like this. I told, I told my dad, Dad, I'm hungry. Can you send me some money? Can you help me? I'm in college, you know, and he sent me a brown box like this, and I opened it up. It was a big box. It was a box f- full of ramen noodles. <laughs> come on, somebody. How many of you know I was rejoicing in the Lord? I was so excited for what he was doing, and there was a card inside the box. There we go. And I opened the box. Inside it was ramen, and then I pulled out a card. It was a beautiful card. It had a hang. It, it had a kangaroo hanging from a tree limb. And you know when you open up a present, you know you get the card, and of course you respectfully read the card first because you you know want to open the card, but you're hoping on the inside what some money please lord we need some money because i asked my dad for some money and oh there was no money in this card it was just a raccoon on a hanging from a tree and it just said hang in there hang in there how many of you like it when you get gifts i got a gift in here let me see what I got in here. There's a couple of gifts that we're going to use. But have you ever opened a gift and it's not what it seems? Who wants a gift today? Anybody want to open a gift? Hold on. Let me, let me close my eyes. One, two, three. Who wants a gift? Raise your hand. Oh, my gosh. I don't know. Can someone choose for me? Henry, who should I choose? You choose. Who gets to open the gift, Henry? Come on. Come on, Henry. Did you choose her? Okay, you, man. Yeah. So, yeah, just, just, just here, put your hands out like this. What is that? Hershey's kid. Have you ever been disappointed in life when you see like the bag? And then it's that, you're like, what is going on? And that's what happens in life sometimes. You know, we get gifts in the mail. It's not what it seems. God sends us gifts. We're kind of surprised. We thought it'd be something different. And we're going through life. And today, I want to start a four-week series about welcoming to the new. That every week, we're going to open up a gift from God and see that he has something special for each and every one of you. And sometimes we go through life and maybe we don't get the gifts that we think we need, but he always gives us what we need. Amen? And so the next four weeks, we're going to start starting a new series called Welcome to the New. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a round of applause. Welcome to the news. Now, I don't know about you, you know, in James it says every good and perfect gift comes from above. Every gift perfect gift comes from above the Father of lights who never changes. Amen. God is a gift giver. He loves giving gifts, right? He is the one that gave his son. He's the one who gave his life. He's the one who gave you purpose. He is the gift. If If anyone loves giving gifts, it's God. And every perfect gift comes from him. Amen. And uh, it says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9, it says, it says, for by grace you have been saved through faith. Amen. By grace you've been saved. Salvation is a gift that God has given you and is given to you by grace. By grace. Amen. Amen. We just celebrate Easter and baptism, and a lot of people received his gift of salvation, a free gift 
right? You don't, maybe you don't feel like you deserve salvation. You maybe don't believe that you deserve anything from God. But God said, hey, it's not the healthy that needs saving. It's the sinner. It's the people that are sick. That's who he's come for. And I don't know where you are at in your life today, but at the end of service today, there's going to be a free gift for you that you get to open up, that you can unwrap and receive his free gifts today. God loves you, and he doesn't withhold any good gift from you. He is a good father, and he loves you, and he's bestowed his love on you. Welcome to the new. In Isaiah 43, it says, Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. God wants to do a new thing in your life. God wants to change your life. He wants to give you a new heart, a new vision. He wants to give you new life today. I love new things. How many of you like a new car with that new car smell? Right? I love getting new clothes and keeping the tag on it as long as possible before you got to put it on. I like new ideas, new life. God has a new life today. All things are coming, are made new. And when God makes new things available to you, he gives you a new identity. He changes your identity. Amen. Now, when I moved to South Florida, I moved from Kansas. We're not in Kansas anymore. And I had to go to this place called the DMV. You ever know what that is? I thought it was in Hades. I think it's in Scripture. The DMV. And I had to get this, this new ID, right? A Florida ID. Not, and they took my Kansas ID. They, they wouldn't let me keep it. I was like, can I keep it? No, we got to take it. And they gave me a new ID. When you come to God, he gives you a new identity, a new identification, When you got saved, when you receive his free gift of salvation, all things are made new. He gives you a new heart, a new name, a new purpose, a new vision, a new life. And he's here today to change your identity. Welcome to the new. Amen. When I got married to my wife, you know what happened? They changed her last name. Kingsley. Yes. She's a part of my family now. We are now one flesh. We are one unit, and we have a new name. Amen. When my kids were born that are here, we got Victoria is here. You know, I named all my kids. Victoria Grace Kingsley. She had a 2% chance to live. And so whenever she was about to be born, I named her Victoria Grace Kingsley. Victoria meant victory. And she had great grace to overcome every odd. Amen. When Isabella, my firstborn daughter, was born, we named her Isabella Sophia. Hallelujah. Isabella means beautiful, right? It means a promise of God. And her middle name, Sophia, means wisdom. So every time I see her, I see beautiful wisdom all the way wherever she goes. You have beautiful wisdom, Bella. And my firstborn son, who's on a basketball trip today, I won't hold him against him, but... He was known as a gift of God. He was my firstborn. Every name has a meaning. And God wants to give you a new name today. He wants to give you a new identity today. Welcome to the new. When my parents named me, they named me Eric Kingsley. Eric with a K, not with a CK and not with a C. It's Eric with K. It's the Viking translation means all powerful one. Come on, somebody. I love that. And of course, I love Kingsley. The king is here. Then they became Christians, and they renamed me Aaron. You know what Aaron stands for? It means mountain of strength. Names have meaning. When you meet God, he changes your identity. He changes everything. Welcome to the new. He gives you a new heart, a new mind, a new vision, a new life. In Bible days, he would change people's names, and every name had a meaning. Whenever he said David, it meant beloved. He was a man after God's own heart. When Saul met 
Jesus, he changed his name to Paul the moment he went out to preach the good news to signify a transformation had taken place in his life. I love this. When Simon walked up to him, walked up to Jesus and he said, hey, drop everything and follow me. He then called him Peter. And he said, now you're going to be a rock. Peter means a rock. And on this rock, I'll build my church. And Peter was one of the, the 12 that took the church to the world. When he changes your name, it's a new start. It's a new beginning. It's a new mission. It's a new opportunity that you have. A new way of living. A new life. Amen. A new strategy. Amen. Welcome to the new. 2 Corinthians 5.17, and this is where this phrase, welcome to the new, comes from. It says this, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Everyone say new. new. A new creation. The old has passed away. The new has come. The new is here. Behold, welcome to the new. A new walk. A new identity. A new way of doing things. His mercy is new every morning. Great is his faithfulness for you and for me. Hallelujah. The old is past. Whatever you did, it is gone. The devil's defeated. Whatever sin you committed does not exist. The old is passed away. The new is here. Welcome to the new. A new identity you have. A new name. When God would do this, this signified a new covenant that he made with people, with man. Amen. He gives you a, a new identity, a new character. You are no longer a sinner. Now you are saved. You are no longer lost. You are now found. You are no longer poor. You are now rich in Christ Jesus. You are no longer wrong. You are right. You are not old or obsolete. You are new and improved in Jesus' name. Welcome to the new, a new identity, a new label. You no longer have fear or I'm afraid or I'm anxious. No, I am now healed. I am now strong. I am now courageous in Jesus Christ. A new identity that you have. A new name, a new walk. You are no longer abandoned. You are now found. You are no longer uh, an orphan, you are now part of the family of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Welcome to the new family. That is you and me. Amen. Do you believe his word? Do you believe what he said about you? No more anxiousness. It's now I'm living in peace because I have the Prince of Peace in me, in you. Welcome to the new. You are as righteous as Christ is righteous. You are as holy as Christ is holy. You are as pleasing to God as Christ is pleasing to God. Your sins are forever paid for and forgotten. We're talking about the new. Amen. Now, Abraham was another person that God changed his name. This guy was old. He was decrepit. He was uh, in his 90s. He was 100 years old. And God met him, and he said, you know what? You're going to be the father of many, many nations. And he changed his name from Abram to Abraham, which means the father of nations. To signify a new beginning, a new start. To let him know everywhere he went when people said his name, hello, father of many nations. He gave him a new vision. He said, go outside and look at the stars of the sky, in the sand, by the sea. Everything you see will be how many kids you have one day. God's saying that to you. He's changing your name today. He's giving you a new identity, a new start, a new beginning. Today, God wants to give you a gift that you're going to unwrap. I want to introduce it to you. It's called righteousness right standing with god what is righteousness romans 4 1 through 5 abraham it talks about it chapter 4 verses 1 through 5 it says and then shall we 
say was gained by Abraham, our forefather, according to the flesh. For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. Verse 3, for what does Scripture say? Abraham believed God. What did Abraham do? He believed God. You believe God today. And it was counted to him, look, as what? Righteousness. Amen. Not to one who works. His wages are not counted as a gift. You are righteous. What does righteousness mean? In the, the Strongs, it says the state of him who is as he ought to be. The condition acceptable to God. How are you saved? By grace. Grace is a free gift. Amen. Nothing you can brag about. Nothing that you earned. It's free. So you can't brag that you got saved. And what happens in life? A lot of times we think we got to be good and do good to become good. Right? But God says, no, first I'm going to make you good. And now because I've made you good, now you will do good things. But doing good things doesn't make you good. No, God makes you good. And then because of what he did, the free gift that he gave, no one can brag about. No one can boast. Oh, I gave a million dollars to the church my whole life. I did this and that. It don't matter. God don't care about all that. That's all good, but that's all a result of what he did freely for you and for me. A free gift of salvation. Saved by grace. It's free. You don't got to earn it. You can't work for it. You can't buy it. He just gives it. And because he gives it, then you want to change. He first changes your identity. And then because you have a new identity, you have a new way of living. Amen. Righteousness simply defined as right standing with God, being free of guilt, condemnation, fear, inferiority. Imagine life with no guilt, no fear, no condemnation. For those who are in Christ, there is now no condemnation. You are no longer condemned. What a blessed life that is. God put you right. God made you right. You are right with him. This is good news. Welcome to the new. We get this gift of salvation. Amen. We get to go to heaven because of this gift. And it's all about Jesus. Don't you love that song we sang? Just Jesus. We go to heaven because of Jesus. A gift of grace. Today we can receive the gift of righteousness. Amen. Today he is sending you a gift. He has a gift for you. Let me see what's in this box. As a gift for you. It's called righteousness. And it's for everybody. Anyone can unwrap the gift. Anyone can have the gift. Amen? Romans 5, 17 says, For it is because of one man's trespasses, death reigned through that one man. How much more will those receive the abundance of grace and the free gift? Everyone, look at that. Free! It's free. Free gift. Americans love free. I love free. Costco, they give you free food. I love free bread. I love free chips at the, you know. I love the Cubano bread for free. We love free. Amen? Free gift he gives. It's free. Look at this. Receive the abundance of grace and what? 
the free gift of what? Righteousness. Reign in life. God wants you to reign in life. What's that? I think that means thrive. That thing, reign. Come on. He wants you to reign in life. Not because of who you were, but now because of who you are. Right. Carlos is right. Right? You are right with God. You have a new name. You have a new identity. Hallelujah. With God. Not because of who you were, but because of who you are in Christ. And today, God wants to give everyone in this room the free gift of righteousness. Of being right with God. Because you believe. And you can't brag about it. It's free. I love free. Free. He freely gives you a new identity. Amen. Do you believe that this morning? Amen. You know, my kids don't clean their room all the time. I wish they did. You know, I, I have a chart on the wall next to their room that says what they should do every day and every week. and They don't always do it, unfortunately. I love them. But you know what? When they don't do everything I say to do or they make mistakes, I still love them. They are still Kingsley's. If your husband and your wife does something wrong or offends you or hurts you, you don't divorce them. No, you're still married. With God, you might disappoint him. You might do things wrong against him, but he still loves you. You are still a part of his family. You are still his kid. Amen. That's how free his grace is. He made a covenant with himself and included you in it. And he can never break a covenant with himself. He is faithful even when you're faithless, the Bible says. This is good news. Welcome to the new. Amen. You do right things not to get right. You do right things because you have a new identity. You don't do things right. Oh, if I keep doing the right thing, then one day I'll get this free. No, you already have it. You do the right thing because of who you are. A king's kid, part of the family of God, a new creature in Christ. The temple of the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. Christ, the hope of the glory is in you. Amen. Everywhere he goes, you go. You are his mouth. You are his hands. You are his feet. Christ is in you. Amen. You do right things because you have this new identity. Hallelujah. Psychologists say the way to change your behavior is to become something else or to change your identity. So when your identity changes, all of a sudden now you start living and doing right things because now you're right with God because you have the free gift of righteousness today. You are right with God. You're in right standing with God. Hallelujah. It's a free gift. Salvation, righteousness comes. A new life comes. A new way. A new heart. A new vision. A new purpose that God is giving you. And it's free. Hallelujah. It's free. You don't got to go to class to get it. You don't got to pay for it. You don't have to go through 30 weeks of courses to get it. It's free, free, freely he gives to you. It's free. Oh, you got to become a religious crazy monk. No, just believe today. Believe, that's all you do. A free gift for you today. Unwrap it, receive it, take it, and become new. How do you earn it? How can you earn? How can you get this free gift? Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. 
A wage had to be paid. You had a debt. All of us did. We all sinned and fell short of the glory of God. No, there's no not one good. None of us are good. But God sent his son to die in your place to behold the Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world for you and for me. And took your place and my place and gave us a new place and a new life and a new vision and a new heart and a new connection freely. A free gift. He sent it to you in the mail. Unlock it. Open it. Receive it today. Open it up. It's yours. It's free. Jesus is our perfect gift. Amen. Isaiah 64 says, But we are all like an unclean thing. And all our righteousness are like filthy rags. We all fade like a leaf. Our iniquities are like the wind. He has taken us away. This is what Jesus did. Jesus came. Amen. Now, I went to Rio. I don't know if you know, my wife's Brazilian. And they have this cool statue of Jesus there. And I want to show you this. Because Jesus came for you and for me. And he took all these things for you. He took lust, you know. He took greed. He took hate. He took sin. For you and for me. That's what he did. And this is what 2 Corinthians 5.21 says. For our sake he made him to be sin. Jesus. Who knew no sin. So that in him. In Christ. We might become. The righteousness. Of God. He made you. Righteous. So he took all this stuff you would ever do wrong 2,000 years ago, paid for it, past, present, and future for you and for me. And then this is what he did. It's not spelled right. He took all this stuff off. made you righteous. He made you right. And he took all this away. That's what Jesus did. He made you right. Salvation is not a goal to be achieved. It's a gift to be received. Amen. It's not a goal to be achieved. You can't achieve it. It's a gift that you unlock today. You open up the box today. And you take it out. It's free for you and for me. Welcome to you, the new. How can you receive this gift of righteousness? Believe. Just believe. Believe what God has said is true. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Just believe today. Amen. John 6, 28 says, Then they said to him, We must... Do the works of God. Jesus answered them, this is the work of God. What is it? That you what? Believe in him. The work is not working to get somewhere. The work is just believing. Do you understand? We think we got to work for it. So you know that stinking thinking that when you get a flat tire, you think you did something wrong to earn that flat tire? Right? Oh, that's God punishing you. Hey, God, you, does, did, do you punish your kids that way? Ah, I'm going to make you sick this week because you messed up. That's not how God is. The work is just believing. That's it. We've come out of a... a a churches 
that taught us we had to work to gain and get and receive his approval. That's not what it is. The Bible just said, I just read it. What does it say? It says, this is the work of God. What? That you, it's talking about you. Everyone say, me. me. To point to your neighbor and say, you. you. Believe in him who he sent. That's the work. That's the work. Ephesians 2 eight says, for by grace. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Not of your own doing. It is the gift of God. It's a gift today. Open up the gift and receive his grace today. Amen. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand. That we would walk in them. You aren't saved by good works. You are saved by grace. And because of that, then you do good. Amen? Amen? I love this story. Honey, I got this picture I want to put here. As we close. I love these little stories. Can you put that here? Like this thing. It's a picture of me and my son, but my firstborn. It's a month old. But this story reminded me of this picture, and you'll see why. This story is about artwork, and listen to this. There was a wealthy man and his son once who loved to collect works of art, rare work of art. In their collection, they had everything from Picasso to Raphael, and they would love to sit and look at the paintings and talk and Then the Vietnam conflict broke out and the young man was drafted and he went to war. He was very courageous. He died in battle, rescuing another soldier. And the father was notified and he was deeply grieved. He was sad. And a month went by and right before Christmas, there was a knock at the door. A young man stood outside the door with a large package in his hand, and he said to the father, I am the man your son died to save. And he saved many lives that day. He often talked about you, and I thought how you and him loved fine art. The father unwrapped the package, and it was a painting of his son done by the man. The father unwrapped the gift. He said, I'm not a great artist, but I want you to have this. The man said as he walked away, the father was amazed by the portrait of the son and hung it over his mantle. And every time a person came to the house, he showed them this painting first. The man died a few months later with a great, and there was this great auction organized to sell his fine art, this Picasso's and everything that he had. And so many influential people came and from all around the world and flew in to buy and this art. On the platform on that day of the auction was the portrait of his son. And the auctioneer cried out, Who will bid on the son? And the room was silent. No one wanted this picture. And soon the people shouted for the famous pictures they came for. And the auctioneer persistently, though, said, Who will bid for the sun? There was a family gardener, and he didn't have much money. The auctioneer said, I have, he says, I have $10. Who will give me 20? And the people were furious by this point. They shouted for the famous paintings. Going once, going twice, sold to the man in the back for $10. The auctioneer now placed down his gravel and stepped down saying the auction was over. And the people shouted, what is the meaning of this? No, we want the bid on the fine art. The auctioneer stated that due to a secret stipulation in the will, the person that bought the son was to receive the entire collection as well. (laughs) 
Whoever gets the Son gets it all. When I was eight years old, I got baptized. But then when I was later, I surrendered my life to Jesus Christ because I really understood what Jesus had done. And many of you in this room right now, maybe today you realize what Jesus has done for you, the free gift that he wants to give you. Maybe you've heard about this stuff, but to this morning you realize, I want that gift. I want to get it all. I need Jesus. You were made right because of what Jesus did. God sent Jesus to this earth to die a cruel death for you and for me. And three days later, he rose out of the grave. He came to life so you could have life today. This is the good news, to give you the free gift of righteousness, to be right today. And the only thing that you need to do is believe. Just believe. Let's just stand to our feet right now.